Father, we give you thanks for your word tonight. Holy Spirit, teach us once again, line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly dividing your word of truth in our hearts and our minds. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation in your word and you in us, in the kingdom of God. Let us that we know when we leave out here, we leave out here more enlightened, more stronger, and Father God, more wiser. So, Father God, let deep call unto deep tonight as you unfold your word like never yet before. Give us understanding heart and understanding mind to hear you and to understand what you're saying and teaching us tonight. So, Holy Spirit, as we dine with you tonight, we thank you as you set this table before us that we eat to our full. So, enlarge us that we take in so much more tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, Give me my daily bread. Matthew 6, reading verses 6 through 13. Matthew 6, 16 through 13. Ready, read. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thine door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret. And thy father, who is seen in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when he pray, I was not a repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be, be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things you have need of before he asks him. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, 8 says, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. The key word here is to ask, ask. And we are told to pray. And six says, be not, with, be thou, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thine closet, and when thou hast shut thine door, Pray to thine father which is in secret, and thine father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. So one, we are supposed to pray, and two, we supposed to ask. And nine says, after this manner, therefore you pray. So this is Jesus was instructing his disciples on how to pray. And he said, this is the manner that you ought to pray. And he is telling us who to pray to. He is saying, you pray to my father. And so he says, this is the manner, our father, or my father, which art in heaven. Hallowed, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. And so we're asking God to give us this day our daily bread. And God um, is saying, make sure every day you come and you ask for your daily bread. Do not let a day go past in you and ask for your daily bread. A lot of children, saints of God, do not spend the time coming to God in prayer, coming to the Father in prayer and asking. And if you don't ask, how are you going to get? Don't fall into that, into that trap of saying, my, will God know my needs? Yes, he know your needs, but he says that we ought to ask for them. Ask, he said, to ask, give us this day our daily bread. 
So we have to get in the habit of when we pray, don't just pray God, don't just pray Psalms 91. Don't just pray and, and, and put on the whole arm of God, Ephesians 6. But go into detail with your daily, for your daily need, your daily bread. What is it that you're looking for for tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thursday. Find out what it is you want tomorrow to bring you. What is the daily, what is your daily need for tomorrow? What is your daily bread for tomorrow? Don't wait until tomorrow come and you're in need. It's too late. And when Jesus said, this is the manner we do it, he's saying, you come to our, our Father. You come to him. And when you come, you ask. Ask him. We take too long to come and ask. This is a prayer where you say, give me this day my daily bread. And so this makes it a daily prayer. When you pray it, don't do what seven says. Seven says, um, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions. How are you praying? Is it that you, it's in your mind, so you just pray it because you know it, and it's just a repeat without faith, without believing you're going to receive it? We notice our Father prayer almost from back to front, left to right. But when you pray it, do you pray it with your needs before God and saying, okay, God, you say I must come and ask you for my daily bread today. Well, this is my daily bread, and you thank him for it. I need, and I thank you for, I ask you for, and you present it to him. This, this prayer is an awesome, powerful prayer. But if you're only praying it uh, out of repetition, then are you praying it out of expectation? Are you expecting these things? When you come before him, do you really hallow or holy his name? Do you really say, well, Father God, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven and mean it? See, a lot of times we pray this prayer and we pray it from our heart. We know this little prayer, I know this prayer from when I was a child. And, but when you pray it, do you know what the words mean? So what God is saying, we need to learn to come to him and ask him every day for our bread. For our bread. Don't get stuck in just repetition. Some of us have, we have a prayer routine. We pray for our family, pray for, pray for us, and our prayer finish. And it's the same prayer every day. It's the same. Can't be the same prayer every day. Is you have the same needs? Are you have, what are you expecting? So we have to get, when we, when we come to God, um, six says, Jesus says, pray. When you pray, enter into your closet. Where you tell you to enter? Into your closet. That means get in a, get in a place where it's just you and God. Turn off the phone. Put it on silence. In fact, don't even put it in the closet when you go. He says, when you, when you, when you, when you pray. When you pray, enter into your closet. Some people go to the bathroom. That's where they're thrown in. That's where they're all taste. This is where they meet with God. So if you go in the bathroom, of course, you shut the door. And he says, when you enter into your closet, he says, shut the door. In other words, you ain't gonna let everybody know you're praying. Close the door, and he says, pray to your father which is in secret. And thine father will see it in secret shall reward you openly. So when you come, 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 and really, really meet with the God. Have a conversation with him. Let it be the same place where you meet with him all the time. It says, when you pray, enter into your closet. So have places what is dedicated just for place of prayer. So you know when you get there, okay, God, this means your time now. For me, it is my room. It is, it is also the front room. It is also my vehicle. It's even sent to my work desk. Those are most of the places I meet with God. So you find that place where you can close the door and it's just you and him. You shut out everything and everyone. Why? Because you're coming to your father. You are praying to God. It says you, you come to him in prayer. And so you make sure your mind is in full with the cares and the, and the worries and people and, and what happened today. 
your mind is wandering off so quickly. Sometimes you, you, you say in the prayer and your mind ain't on what you're saying because you're so used to repeating it. You just repeat it in your mind elsewhere. That's not the way you meet with God. That's not the way you pray. So when we pray, it says, enter into your closet and shut the door. That means it's you, just you and God. You and God. Don't bring nobody in your mind with, with, with you. Don't be looking at the time and say, oh, I only got five minutes. No, man. No. Say, now, God, this means your time. He know what time you have to go to work. He know what time to lunch over. And usually when I meet with God to work, I have 20 minutes. Unless I come to work early, um, I start work early. If I start work five, ten minutes early, I'll add that on to my, on to my um, time with God to get back that time and not to be paid for that time. So I have a little extra time. And when I come, while I walk in, I say, now, Father God, get me back to my desk in time. So if you set the atmosphere right, you don't have to worry about going over the time. That five minutes, 15 minutes you might have, you might only have five, 10 minutes. That five, 10 minutes is sufficient time for you to spend with God if you're ready. Come in in that place of preparedness to speak to him, to see him. And so when you come to pray, you come now. You and him. It is you and him. And you pray and he said, tell us what to do. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's honor him. Let's worship him first. Let's give him thanks. Let's praise him. And let's get to ask him. We have to ask daily for our bread. We have to ask daily for our bread. If we're looking to see our bread, let's go ahead and ask. Let's go to Luke 11. Luke 11, reading... One through four. Luke 11, one through four. Ready to read? And it shall pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, and he said unto them, When he prayed, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So this is another account. For us says, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone. And so now you're going to God in prayer. For he's saying, Lord, I repent. Father, I repent. Forgive me, O God. And then what he say? Forgive those. He say, as you forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Let's forgive. We cannot come to God and we're holding unforgiveness, hate, malice, bitterness in our hearts against anyone. So we're asking God to forgive us of our sins and we also forgive those who have hurt us, who have wronged us, but we make sure to fix it. We make sure to fix it. Um, when we do it, now we can come to God and ask. Give him thanks, give him praise, but we have to ask. Five, three says, give us day by day our daily bread. Give us day by day our daily bread. So we have to get in the habit of every day presenting our needs to God. Every day, get in the habit of presenting our needs to God. And you present that need to God. If you get up 5 o'clock in the morning, if you get up 6 o'clock in the morning, if you get up 2, 3, 1, whatever time you get up in the morning to pray, 
do it first thing before you head out the door. Don't say, I can pray on my way to work. No. Find the time. Make the time. Allocate the time to spend with God before you get on your start. Before you start your day, you spend that time with God so that now your day has been ordered. Now your day has been commanded. Now your day has been blessed because you have spoken blessings into your day. Now your day can go ahead and make you prosperous. Why? Because you've already brought your day before God. Now you will see your needs met. Why? Because you've taken the time and pray and ask God. So don't just ask God to cover, protect, and put on the armor, just thinking about um, protection. No. It's also about your daily bread. So that we are not overwhelmed, we are, we are always connected with him, and that we do what he tells us to do so we can see the results that is mentioned in the word for us to see. So day by day, we should be seeing our daily bread. Day by day, we should be asking for our daily bread. Day by day, we should be meeting with God in the secret place. If you have a prayer closet, meet with him there. If, you, if the bathroom is your place, you meet with him there. Wherever you meet with God, you come and you meet with him and only him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Don't let your mind be on, on things other than him. Holy Spirit, what am I asking for today? He's your helper. Okay, okay, my, my, my comfort, my, my helper. Holy Spirit, what is it I need for this day? Give me the prayers to pray to my Father. What is it that I need so that I am not overwhelmed, that I am not caught off guard, that I do not, that Satan do not try to come or, the, or, or you can say my enemy try to set a, a trap or a snare for me. The car break down. Pray over it. Say, God, I thank you that my money will be used correctly and not go to waste. You bind and you loose. But you make sure come to God and ask. Jesus want us to ask the Father. If he didn't want us to ask the Father, he would have never told his disciple how to pray. And John the Baptist also taught his disciples how to pray. And so Jesus gave us an example, the perfect prayers on how to pray on how to pray and who to pray to. We pray to the Father. And if we do it correctly, then our daily bread should be met. When it comes to God protection, provision, um, we have no worries with that. We shouldn't have to worry about tomorrow if we give our tomorrows to God. If there's an order that we keep, and if we keep the order, then there should be no problems with us. None at all. Let's go to Ma Matthew 7. So just turn over. 7, verses 7 and 8. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ready, read. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that acts it, receive it. And he that seek it, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be opened. So, Jesus again, ask and it shall be given you. So we have to take the time and ask our Heavenly Father for our daily bread. Ask our Heavenly Father for our daily bread. If there is something going on and you don't like it, you take the time and you bring that to God. And ask the Holy Spirit what to say, how to bring this to him, so that it is fixed and it is fixed for forever or it is fixed for good. But we have to ask. And he said, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given you. Not might. I'll think about it. It's not there. It says, ask and it shall be given you. So our faith and our belief in our Father, our Heavenly Father, should get us to the place when we ask, we know it is taken care of. It is done. And we have to operate knowing that his word is his word because he is his word. And his word can never return to him empty or void. So we have to ask. If he say ask, then we ask. If, we, if he say ask the Father for your daily bread, you ask the Father for your daily bread. But we make it a habit of asking the right way. They should, they should not be repetitious prayers. 
that we pray every day, and we've been praying it for the same for what, a couple of years now. No, the prayers should be prayed according to our needs, according to our desires, our hearts' desires, according to our wants. Simply because um, this is in the Word of God. When we turn to what is that? Philippians four nineteen. Let's go to that. Thank you, Philippians four. Four, yes, Philippians 4 19. Philippians 4 19. Ready, read. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Right. So it says, and my but my God shall supply all my needs. So when we come to God and asking God for our daily bread. We bring the word of God and say, now, Father God, I thank you this, as I come to you, I thank you for my daily bread. And your word says that you shall supply all of my needs. And then you tell him what your needs are. And if your needs line up to the word of God, then you make sure, bring that to him so that you can see it enter your life. And my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we have to know the word and to trust the word don't sit in need don't sit dependent on the paycheck let this be the last day you look for man to take care of you let this be the last day you look for the paycheck to take care of you god don't play you know let me tell you why in june of last year i think i've just gotten paid i get paid bi-weekly i believe that was the last paycheck in june god said to me um, I want you to give all your paycheck. I was like, the whole paycheck? He said, trust me. Put half this, do half for this, and do half for the, next, for the other half. I said, well, two half make a whole. That means I ain't got nothing to live. So he said, do this for half, do this for the next half. I say, okay, Lord. So be it. That was the last check I had. It's almost a year now. Let me tell you something. God has to be able to trust you. If we're looking to be used mightily as a giver in the kingdom of God, he's going to put you through some waters. He's going to put you through the waters. I want you to know that. You can get to the place like Elijah the widow woman and her son. There was a famine. God sent Elijah to the widow woman who only had a little bit of oil and a little bit of a flour, call it a meal. The man of God, tell her, she, he hungry, make him a cake first. She said, brother man, only made my son and this is our last meal. I'm going to fix this for us and then we're going to die because there ain't nothing left. So there's no way of giving this to you. And I paraphrase it. Mm-hmm. Elijah said, make me a cake first and you'll have more than enough left. The word of God says she trusted the man of God, the servant of God. And so she made him mm-hmm. that little cake, gave it to him and her, her son, and Elijah eat throughout the whole famine out of the same barrel that only had a little bit of oil, I mean a little bit of flour, and out of the crews that only had a little bit of oil. A little bit. So when it comes to trusting in God, let's trust God with a little bit we have and watch God multiply it. See, we're looking for the storehouse to be full of plenty, but it said that it never ran out. It never said it was full either. So every time she decides she wants cake for them three, she go, pour it out, put the oil on it, and bake it. Okay, I think I want some more. Pour it out, oil and flour, and bake. It never said it was full, but it said it never ran dry. So when it comes to God, see him supplying your need like that. Don't look to the picture, because if you look to the picture, you're going to fall out. It's not enough. The paycheck is not enough 
So are, you going to are we going to trust in God for our daily bread or are we going to trust in self and man? If we trust in self and man, we put ourselves back under curse. So we have to get to the place where we see the oil and the flour, the crows and the barrel not running out. I look in the fridge sometimes, water, water, water. I close the fridge back. I go back, water, 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 because I got a couple different shelves. I close the fridge, go back, go back to the fridge, like you can change. Hey, change. I say, okay, well, God has made you, you say. See, now, God gave me his word. I say, well, God, you tell me do this and this, and I do that. I didn't do this and this. I say, so now, God, I, God, I thank you for feeding me. And let me tell you something from that day to now. This is now what? April. Almost a year. Ten months later. Ten months later, we have to get to the place where God can trust us with what he has made us a steward over. So if he, if he tell you to give the whole paycheck, don't look at that as your money. Die your money. Don't look at that as you earn that. It is yours. Why? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if he allow you or he bless you with that and he asks you back for you and he giving him back your own things. So when we think and we grab and say, mine, 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 and God can't get it from you, then that's all you will have, have, have. And when you use that, don't go to him and say, well, God, I need it. He said, but when I tell you to do this and this with that, so that you don't be in need, you didn't listen to me. You trust itself. You trust in man. You trusted the paycheck, but you didn't trust me, so now curse are you. And that's Jeremiah 17. So we have to get to the place where we believe the word, and we go to God for our need. It says, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Is God short on anything? No. By his riches and glory in Christ Je by Christ Jesus. So it's by God's riches and glory that he blesses us and he supplies our needs. Not according to us. Not according to us. So we have to make sure that we do all that God has instructed us to do. Let us make sure go to God our Father and pray for our daily bread. Daily. Daily. We have to trust Him. And if this is the order, Let's believe it. Let's do all that he tells us to do. We cannot trust in self. We cannot depend on the paycheck. We cannot depend on man. We cannot depend on family. God is showing us and telling us what to do. So we have to do what he tells us to do. If we're looking to see that better life, that greater life, we have to do what God instructed us to do. So if he say in his word, we must pray to him for our daily bread. Let us pray to him every day for our daily bread. But now we have to know what our daily bread is that we need. We have to know what our daily bread is. And when we do it, we're giving him thanks. We're giving him praise. We're asking him to we repent of our sins so that he hear our prayers. That he hear our prayers. We have to do it the way God instructed, instructed us to do. Let's go to John 16. John 16. Read in verse 23. John 16. Twenty-three and twenty-four. Sixteen, twenty-three, and twenty-four. Ready, read. And, um, and that day, day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, he will do it. Hitherto. Have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and ye shall receive, 
that your joy may be filled. Amen. So Jesus again. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father. Whatsoever you shall ask the Father. Again, we are instructed to ask God, our Father. Whatsoever you should ask the Father in my name. So whatever you ask God for, God our Father in the name of Jesus, it will be given unto you. He will give it to you. This is God, God can't lie. This is his word. This is his word. So he said, whatsoever you should ask the Father in my name, the Father will give it to you. Guaranteed. This ain't no just words. This is Jesus saying exactly what will happen if you come to him asking and trusting and believing and you come with faith. But you have to come. You have to ask. And you ask with faith or in faith believing that you receive it. So make sure you ask. He said, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So again, we must ask. Come every day, looking and expecting your daily needs to be met. Every day. You spend time with God praying so you can get instructions from him. So you can ask. Seeking and knocking. Don't never stop seeking and knocking. This is how you find him. Seeking and knocking. The house is here. If you see it in your spiritual eyes, Go in every room. Go in the bathroom. To us who want an altar. Now, oh, what kind of altar you want? Get rid of that small little altar you in and, and say, God, give me a big altar. Give me a big altar. Give me a big home. Give me a nice home. Give me a more comfortable home. I want my own home. You go to God. It's a need. But you go expecting to receive that. You go expecting to receive it. You have to come to your father. Don't look to the paycheck. Don't look to the paycheck. Don't look to man. Don't look to self. You look to God. And he says, my God shall supply all of your needs. All of your needs. Is it a need? If it's a need, then he's supposed to supply it. If, you are his, if he is your father, he is obligated to keep his word if you do your part. God is obligated to keep his word Provided you do your part. If we don't do our part, he's obligated to keep his word to us. He's only obligated to keep his word to the ones who do his will. Who keep his word. So if we keep his word and we do what he tells us to do, then God is obligated or committed to do his part. To keep his part. If we're not doing ours, don't expect him to keep his word to you. Because there is an order. And the order is that we must keep, do his commandment. We must know his laws, his statutes, and his precepts to do them, to keep them. And when we do that, he's obligated or committed to do what, is, what he says in his word. So if we are not doing our part, we could pray for the next 10 years. He was, he's not obligated or committed to keep his word to, to no one who is in keeping his word. So in order for us to see manifestation of his word come to pass in our lives, for us to see God move and keep his word, we must do our part. Do what the word tells us to do. We are instructed to ask in prayer. Let's go back to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, reading verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Ready, read. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So the things that he's talking about are the cares of this world, what we need. We need shelter, we need food, we need clothing. We need those things, but God said we are not to run after those things. And he says, he know that we have need of these things. But he is telling us, what to do. He say, first of all, in 25, he say, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you should eat, what you should drink, 
nor yet for your body what you shall put on. And then he says, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? So God is saying, do not hurt your head over those things. He is your father and he know you have need of those things and he will give them to you. But he's saying, do not take thought. In other words, that word thought means worry or be anxious. Do not be worried about your life. Don't be anxious about life. What you going a lot of people are stressed out about bills. Food, how are they gonna pay this bill? How are they gonna pay the bill? If you was if you say it's your bill, you're responsible for that. But if God is your father, give it to him. Let's do what Jesus said. Jesus said that we ought to cast all your cares on him. For it's Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares on Christ. He's telling us what to do with the anxiety, with the worries, with the stress of life. Do not take it on. He said, cast it. And then in 33, he says, after he said, I don't want you to worry or take no thought for your life. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's our part. Our part is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Not what we think is right. According to what the word of God says is righteousness. But that we are in right standing with God. That we are doing what he said to do. To love him with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength. To love him and thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thine heart. Lay not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. So he can direct your path. Trust in the Lord. He is telling us what to do. If we do our part. Then he says. And all these things shall be added unto you. The raiment. The clothes. The food. Your, in other words. Your daily bread. Your daily bread. He's telling us what to do. Our part is that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God's part, and these things shall be added unto you. So we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. First, not second. We love him. We love ourselves and people as we love ourselves. Those are the commandments that we are commanded by Jesus to do and to keep. If we are doing those and we are not hating people and we are forgiving them and repenting of sins and we are living right and we are living in the will of God and we are doing what we have instructed us to do, then God is committed to, follow, to give us according to what his word promised us. He says his promises are yes and amen. But they are only yes and amen to the ones who do his will. The ones who keep his word. The ones, in other words, who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so when we learn to do this, we can fall to come to God every day for our daily bread. But if we are not doing what he instructed us to do, then know for sure Satan is right there presenting himself to God, who's our, Satan, our adversary, presenting himself to God and saying, okay, look at what your children do. No, you can't. You release that blessing of God. They don't have a right to collect that. Because they are not seeking first the kingdom of God and they definitely ain't doing your righteousness. So if you give Satan a legal right to accuse you before God, then you could pray, but those, if you, those prayers will not be answered. Because we have to do our part. This seeking business is serious. This putting God first is serious. He is, he is first, and he ought to be first. He have to be first. God don't take second place to nothing. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's our part. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Loving, like Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And so we must love people with the love of Christ. And we must forgive them, regardless of what they did. And we cannot hold hatred in our heart. He said, if you hate the brother, you are a murderer. And so if you're a murderer, who going to God? How are you going to God if you're a murderer? If you haven't confessed your sins? So we have to know what to do and how to how to work the word of God 
so that we see the blessings of God, of God in our lives. He said he know that you have need of these things. And so let's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and ask God the Father for daily bread and God is now committed to do his part. And he'll add these things unto us. We have to make sure we're staying in the will of God. We're not putting our trust in the flesh because now if we do that, we're putting a curse on our head according to Jeremiah 17 and 5. So we want to make sure we stay out of the curses. We want to stay in righteousness. And we want to stay keeping the commandments of God. That we make sure we, we stay in right standing with God. Because truly we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when we do our part, God now is obligated or committed to do his part. So we're looking for God to move his hand, then let us make sure that our lives are holy, that we're walking in righteousness. So when we go to God with anything, we, we see the manifestation right away. Right away. The children of Israel in, in Exodus 16. Let's go to Exodus 16. They murmured and complained to Moses and Aaron. They were special too. They murmured and complained again about why they take them out of Egypt. They was filled in Egypt. In other words, they, they eat. They wasn't hungry in Egypt. Exodus 16. They wasn't hungry. And in other words, they were trying to say, why y'all take us in this wilderness for us to die? Why y'all just didn't leave us in, in Egypt? Because we, we could have eaten, we could have drank. But the sad thing is they were slaves. But they, they, they murmured against Aaron and, and Moses because they felt as though Moses and Aaron wasn't taking care of their needs. So Exodus 16, um, I want to go from 1 to 15 so we get an understanding. I know, right? Let's do it quickly. Exodus 16, 1 through 15, ready to read? And they took their journey from Elam. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. And on the 15th day of the second month, after their departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against it and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain race every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they brought in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather in. And Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel, At evening, then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heard your murmurings against the Lord, and on ye, that he murmur against us. And Moses said, This shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, for that the Lord heard your murmurings, which we murmur against him. 
and what are ye? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation, For he had heard your murmurings, and it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and the, the dew lay round about the host. And then, then the dew that was torn up, behold, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small brown thing, as small as the whole frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, Is it manna? For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Amen. So, the children of Israel, it was, the man alone was, was about 600,000. 600,000, that was the man that left Egypt in number. Not the little children in sad. And here it is now. They murmured and complained against Moses. So they thought Moses and Aaron. But it was against God that they murmured and complained. And they said, look, you all want to kill us out here, but hungry. Why y'all didn't leave us in Egypt? So now God heard them murmuring. God said, okay, let them know. They can have meat in the evening, the quails, and bread in the morning. God fed them for 40 years. 40 years. So if God could give them an every day without fail, every day without fail, see he said, and it shall come to, in five, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day you shall prepare that which they bring in. So on the sixth day he gave them enough for two days, which was the Sabbath. And so if God could provide for all of what you think about us, especially when we don't murmur and complain, See, they murmured and complained against God so much until the last straw. They murmured and complained so much that the last straw, Satan said, God, they didn't murmur and complain from the first day they left Egypt. They was murmuring and complaining. Now, because of all this ungratefulness, they can't cross over into this promised land. They brought, I'm sure he brought a case against them. God said, you know what? You murmured and complained so much, so un, un, so great, ungrateful. He said, you will die in this wilderness. They spoke it so often. See, that's why we can be careful what we speak. We have to be careful because death and life is in the power of the tongue. They spoke it over and over. We just read it there when they say um, in, in 3, where it says, for, we have, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. <laughs> They've been speaking death from their left. So what had to happen? Death had to come. And guess what? They all died in the wilderness except the little children. So we, have to, we can't murmur and you can't speak negative words. And even though they murmured and complained, God for 40 years gave them manna from heaven. And he gave them meat in the evening and bread in the morning. And so when we get in the habit of asking, God provided for them manna. Father God, give me manna this day from heaven. He rained it down on us. But we have to ask. They murmured and they got it. We ask. How much more would God give it? So let us get in the habit of coming to God and asking. Coming to God and asking. Coming to God and asking.
for our daily bread so that we get to see a better life. But we have to do our part. God is only committed to do his part when we do our part. So we have to make sure we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're living in right standing with God. We are lifting our clean hands and a pure heart. We are loving God of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we are loving our neighbor as ourselves. If you don't love yourself and you're unsure if you love yourself or, or you don't know what he's talking about, you go to God. God, I'm sure if I love myself enough. I don't even know if I love myself. So how can I love others? Or oh, Lord, teach me how to love me and how to teach and, and how to love people as I love myself. It's simple. And if we ask, God will fix it for us. So that we don't be miserable. Life ain't supposed to be miserable. You're supposed to have a joy. You're supposed to have a laugh on your face and a smile in your heart all the time. No one's supposed to raise that off. People talk to me, they say, well, I know you're having a great day. I say, I sure am. I have purpose in my heart to only have great days. I have purpose in my heart to only hear good news. And if I purpose it there, I expect that every day. Every day. So if you're expecting bad news, bad news is going to come. If you're expecting a great life, you'll see yourself living a great life. But it's all on us and what we speak. A lot of time we're, too, we're quick to open our mouth too, too easily and we speak what we see. And if you see fair, you're going to speak fair. If you see death, you're going to speak death. If you see lack, you're going to speak lack. Oh, I don't have nothing in this fridge, so guess what's going to happen? You're not going to be in the fridge. I look in the fridge, I saw water. I saw water. I saw water. I just closed the fridge and I go back in the room. I didn't open my mouth. I come back again. Water, water, water. I closed the fridge. And I say, now God, now you tell me do this, and you tell me do that, I ain't got no food to eat, I ain't got this. I, no, 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 I ain't do that. I open it up, close it. Say, now Father God, I thank you for feeding me. I've learned to say, thank you for feeding me. And truly, he's feeding me. So we have to get to the place where we ask. Let's, get, let's do what Jesus did. Jesus housed all of those people in the wilderness. He fed them all. And after he fed them on two fish and five loaves, he picked up 12 basket left fragments. It blows my mind. We got to get to that place that he can do the impossible. Not that God can do the impossible, but let us get to the place where we ask. God kept these people so well that they close grow with them. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy. I mean. Their clothes grow with them. You know there wasn't a Walmart in the wilderness, you know. Wasn't no marshals. Deuteronomy 29. Twenty nine read in verse five. Deuteronomy twenty nine verse five. Ready read. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes and a old upon you, and thy shoes is not waxing old upon thy foot. So their clothes never had holes. Their clothes they say it didn't wax old or didn't get old. 40 years, their clothes didn't get old. Their shoes didn't get old. Their shoes didn't get old. Their clothes didn't get old for 40 years in the wilderness. So if God can do that for them, you don't think he, he can do it for us? But we have to ask and expect. It's amazing. We worry about the little things. We need to worry about the little things. God, I thank you for new wardrobe. Simple. God, I thank you. This, this fashion, this fashion been out of style five years now. I overdue. Put an end to those who will close, man. Pack them up and put them in the garbage. Don't even give them to nobody. I'm styled and leave. <laughs> oh, I, I lose it. Wait to get in this. I got to go. I got to put I can't throw this out, man. This cost me money. Now you in five size bigger than that outfit. Let that be a blessing to someone or put it in the garbage if it all. We have to learn to stop walking in poverty. Let's go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. One, someone was telling me they, they had put their foot in one shoe what they had in the closet. I said, when they put their foot in the shoe, say, drop right off, dry off. 
Been there too long? Don't let them shoes be, I ain't gonna call the name, but the name, the shoe store start with J. And them shoes would be like 20, 30 dollars. You can't wear them long. No. <laughs> I bear one of them. I don't know if I was too heavy for that shoe or what. But the heel, gone and too must he one wear. I said, what kind of shoe to say? Must he make out of paper? How the heel walk down in one day? I said, never again. I said, but what they make this out of? And look at the style, pretty, pretty style, flawless. Beautiful, I, I tell you, I was, I went, I don't remember where I went, went to one out there. I come and I take that shoes, and man, the shoes are so comfortable. Forget I'm trying to stand for that shoe. When I take it off and I, and I look at the, I said, where the heel gone? <laughs> it was a brand new pair of shoes. I said, what happened? I ain't trying to figure that it was made out of paper. Never went back there again. So, their, their shoes never wax old and their clothes never wax old. So now let's read Psalm 105, verse 37. 25, 105, sorry, verse 37, Psalm 105, 37, ready to read? He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. One more time. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among them. Amen. So among all of them, they wasn't even sick. They wasn't feeble. And so God took care of their, all of their needs. So when we come to God, you, um, when you come to God, ask it, you make sure put that in there. Father God, I thank you for a healthy body, a healthy mind a healthy soul. Pray that prayer. Father God, I thank you for a healthy body, a healthy mind, a healthy soul, so that you are complete. You are not just whole in spirit, or, but you are whole in body, mind, soul as well. We got to pray. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Bread, health, and being healthy and strong, it's a need, man. But what you could do sick, no, if you're tired, Father God, put your strength in me. Strength in me. So we have to learn to pray these prayers. And then you gotta, you can't eat everything fried. <laughs> everything brown. There's a, there's, a, there's a fast food restaurant. I ain't calling no name. Look at the menu, everything brown. Where is, where is the green lettuce and the, and the tomato? And, and where is the salads? Everything brown. I look at this menu. I said, well, why here? Why eating this food? You got to mix it up. We can't have fast food and fried food every day. Got to mix it up. So we got to be healthy. But we, have, we want God to... See, there's a path for God to play. There's a path for us to play. So if you're going to eat the fast food, you can't eat it every day. Can't eat it every day. So we can't say, God, keep me healthy. And everything fried, we won't put in our mouth. Everything sweet, we won't put in our mouth. Got to make it balance. Life is balanced. So we have to balance out. And we have to eat healthy. I ain't tell you to eat a salad every day. But if you want, if you want dessert, if you're going to portion size. But let's, let us make sure we're asking God um, for our daily bread. If he took care of all of them in the wilderness, he gave them meat in the evening bread in, in the morning. He also kept them better clothes, didn't get old and unholy, full of holes, neither did their shoes, and there was none feeble or sick among them. We're entitled to that as well. So let us make sure every day come to God with our needs, that our daily, our daily bread we will request or ask of them and that we expect to receive them when we do ask them for them. There's no use praying and asking if you don't receive them. You have to see yourself um, with them in this, through your spiritual eyes. So if you say, God, I thank you for a healthy body, healthy mind, a healthy um, soul, and he said, okay, now I want you to read five chapters a day, you don't say, no, I can't do that. He's trying to get your soul now healthy. Okay, 
Don't park right underneath the door. Park uh, at least a mile away and then walk. Don't say, Satan, you're a lie. You'll help me in the sun. No. That's him left. You know, you got to move that body. So you have to exercise. We have to hear him when we pray because he's going to give us instructions on what to do. So we have to be open um, to them. So when it comes to asking God for our daily bread, we come in prayer, repenting of sins, forgiving all those who have hurt us, um, asking for forgiveness, giving God thanks and prayers, and his gates with what? Thanksgiving and his courts with prayers. You don't never stop no prayer going before God without first being thankful to God. It is worship. It is a sacrifice. It's worship. It is a sacrifice. So you make sure that you're giving God a sacrifice. And then you come before God. You hallow his name. Father, I am grateful. I am thankful for the love that you poured on me. I thank you for the way you take care of me. I thank you for being my God. I thank you that you're my friend. I thank you that you care for me and my family. I thank you that you are my father, my redeemer. You poured love on him. What else could we give him? Pour out love on him. Raise up your hand, lift up your hands, and give him thanks and praise. And Father, I love you, I thank you. We need to lift up our hands. It is an evening sacrifice. So when we lift up our hands, it's a sacrifice. Satan don't like that. So we have to learn to do it God's way so that we see a different tomorrow, that we see a greater and better tomorrow, but we need to trust him. We have to trust him. So in the mornings, and I would suggest you do it in the morning before you go out. Don't wait until you get on the road to pray. You pray and command your morning. You pray and you ask for your daily bread. Before you get started, you make sure that you are saturated um, with the word and in the presence of God. Do not be rushing yourself to get out of his presence. He is the one who gave you that day. So if he gave you that day, give him the first part of your day. Give him the first part of your day. And if the first part of your day is holy, guess what? The whole day becomes holy. But when we rush out and we don't have that time to spend with him, we open the door so all kind of foolishness from the devil. So God is first. Love him, honor him, give him sacrifices of worship and praise. Let praise be on your lips and you lift up holy hands as a sacrifice unto God. So when you get in his presence, he hear you right away. He's amazing. Every day I, I, I open my eyes and he's right there. He's literally right there. And it, it's amazing. Can't get, can't wait to be with. I know one day he can take me to heaven, you know. But I say, God, you got to bring me back down because I finish. There was one time I was praising God. I was right in here. We were in praise and worship, and literally I started to lift off the ground. My feet never left, but my spirit started to leave. I was like, God, I got so high. I said, What? And of course, when my mind took back, I came right back down. Get in that presence and stay there because it's a place that you want to be in all the time. It keeps you at peace and it keeps him in the front of you so that you're not overwhelmed and you're not fearful. Amen? Amen. So we're going to make sure, trust God, give it to Jesus. Last one, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And a lot of us know the Psalm 23, but do we believe it? Do we truly believe Psalm 23? Do we have Jesus? Do we have God as our shepherd? Do we have him as our shepherd? Psalm 23, let's really quickly, ready, read the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, showing goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Jesus, let God be your shepherd. Let him shepherd you. If he shepherd you, then you don't have to worry about the cares of this world. Shepherd is there to lead and guide and to care for the sheep, to keep them safe and protected and to lead them in green pastures, meaning that you don't have to worry about your food. He will lead you there. He will, he will bring you to the food or he'll bring the food to you. But you have to believe that. He it says the Lord is my shepherd. You have to make him your shepherd. You have to you have to rely on him. It says he making me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. That's rest. So let us get to the place where Psalm twenty three really becomes alive in our spirit, and that we hold on to that. Stop trusting in self. We trust in self. We make ourselves tired and weary, frustrated and full of anxiety. Let us put that behind us and allow God to be our shepherd to lead us. Let us allow him to be our father and give us our daily bread. But we have to ask. If you ask, it says you will receive whatsoever you ask for. So let us get to the place where we ask daily. And like I said, first thing in the morning, give yourself some extra time to be able to put that prayer up to God, but give him first praise and worship and, and giving him thanks. Let's start that first thing in the morning and you watch your life start to change. You watch the fear go away. You watch the trust in God increase to where you don't have to keep worrying and taking care of yourself. Any problem come, I give it to Jesus. I say, God, this one for you. Father, I give this one to you. You have to give it to him. If you're expecting a better life and a greater life, we have to rise up now and allow God to increase our faith, increase our trust, our dependence on him. Because um, Jeremiah 17, 5 says, um, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make flesh his arms. For he shall, for, and make flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath or a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good come, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. We got to get from that. Stop trusting in self. You're destroying yourself when you trust in self. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your word tonight. Our Lord, we come right now, first of all, repenting, for the times when we didn't trust you, for the times we didn't make you our shepherd, for the times we didn't come to you for our daily bread, for the times, Father God, when we trusted in self, and trusted in man, trusted in the paycheck, trusted in parents, trusted in friends and family, trusted in everyone other than you. Lord, we repent. When we didn't come, when we was not Faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Lord, we repent. We repent, Father God, also for not coming to you to supply our needs of trusting in self. We repent. We repent, O oh God, for not knowing your word, not being a good steward over our time by inviting you in the morning into our lives by asking you to come and be a part of our day, asking you for help, not trusting, but praying repetitious prayers or rushing out of your presence to say we prayed because we know we should pray, 
and praying prayers amiss and praying prayers that were empty and most of all not seeking first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. Lord, we repent. Forgive us, Father God, for walking in ignorance and not walking and seeking after knowledge, the right way of coming to you, the right way of asking, the right way of trusting. Lord, we repent. So, Father God, we thank you as you forgive us our sins tonight. Teach us, O oh God, to put our trust in you, to trust you with our heart and lay not our, with our whole heart and lay not our own understanding. Teach us, O oh God, how to allow our Lord, our Savior, to be our shepherd, that we allow you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to shepherd us, to lead us in green pastures, to keep us, to protect us, to truly set a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Teach us, O oh God, how to look to you to supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Teach us, O oh God, how to be faithful in all that you've allowed to come into our hands, that we be faithful in the unrighteous mammon, Father God, in the name of Jesus, but not putting our trust in self, but to truly trust you according to Proverbs 3, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we get ready to leave your presence, Father God, we repent once again. And Father, if we have opened doors, Father God, to allow the enemy to bring a case against us because we didn't trust you, and your word command us to trust you. And he brought a case because we didn't trust. He brought a case because we've been unfaithful in the unrighteous mammon, and the wealth, the riches, the monies, or whatever, the finances that you've given to us, if we've not been a good steward over it, if we've not done what you've commanded us to do, we repent, and if Satan, if the accuser of the brethren, and if Satan, our adversary, have brought a case against us, Lord, we are guilty. We are guilty, O oh God, of truly not trusting in you, According to your word, and we've trusted in self, we are guilty, Father God. We, when Jesus had gave, given us the manna on how to pray, and we have not asked you daily for our daily bread, we have not made Jesus our shepherd, for the word of God says, The Lord is my shepherd. And we are guilty. We repent. And Lord, you say, If we confess our sins, that you are just. Just and faithful to cleanse us, to forgive us our sins, and to wash us of all and cleanse us of all unrighteousness of God. We have repented, Lord, and we ask you now, Father God, to overturn the verdicts that Satan have against us. When we have not been a good steward over the unrighteous mom and Father God, forgive us. And Lord, overturn that verdict, Father God. Teach us how to be righteous, Father God, so that you can trust us with true riches. In the name of Jesus. Overturn the verdict, Father God, when we've trusted in self and removed the curse, Father God, off of us, Father God, that we do not, Father God, be like a shrub in the desert, Father God, like a shrub, Father God, on in a habited land, for a salty, habited, uninhabited land, Father God. Let us see when good come, Father God. So we ask you to overturn that verdict, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Overturn, Father God, when we truly, Father God, didn't trust you to supply our needs. We didn't allow you to meet our wants, as your words say in Psalm 23. Father God, overturn the verdicts and teach us, O oh God, how to come before you daily. Heavenly Father, asking for our daily bread, trusting you with all of our heart, and truly depending on you and coming to you for our needs and our wants and also our desires. And Father God, we thank you for teaching us, Father God, to do this daily. Father God and Lord, we thank you for overturning, Father God, the verdict that were against us. According to your word, you say you've blotted out all the, all the, all the ordinances that were against us. Father God, how we nailed them to the cross of Jesus Christ. And Jesus who became a curse for us. Because it says, curse is anyone that hung on a tree. He hung on a tree and he took and he became a curse for us. That we are no longer under a curse of the law. But truly we have been delivered and set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so Father God, according to your word, 
we thank you for overturning these verdicts that were against us. And God, I ask you now to bless us, bless our bread and water, and keep our sicknesses away from us. Father God, open up a door for us, Father God, where we allow, Father God, you to be our shepherd. Open up that door, Father God, that our supplies are met, Father God. Every door that was closed to our needs, our wants, and our desires, because we walk, Father God, and in curses, and we lived under curses, we ask you to open up those doors now, Father God, to your abundant life, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, the life that Jesus died to give us, we take it. And Father God, we declare this day, Father God, that you are our shepherd, and that we have no want. We declare this day that we will come, Father God, asking for you to give us our supply, our needs, and our daily bread. And so, Father God, we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.